Welcome back to another episode of Scenic Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Logan Lowe. Chad Vasquez. Today we're looking at the prison fight scene from the second season of Daredevil with The Punisher, played by John Bernthal, in this really like crazy fight scene with yeah. you know melee weapons, improvised weapons, really cool. I'm excited about this. Yeah, it's actually it's a very good fight scene. All right, let's check it out. Castle knows something's up. Look at that stare. He's ready. Look at that stare. It's ready to get punishment. Here he goes. Bam. Just going through these guys. This is good use of terrain, right? We've seen this before in Raid 2 yeah. with Hammer Girl, where they make use of this narrow corridor. You have a melee fight with these numbers that could overwhelm Frank, but because he's fighting them essentially one at a time. Can't get flanked. So he exactly. Has to, yeah. That's an interesting hip throw. That's a type of Filipino hip throw. They call the Filipinos call their kind of grappling art dumong. And it's basically used for weapons. So you have a, a, an attacker with a weapon and you use your dumong to take him to the ground and relieve him of the weapon, which is exactly what Frank did here. I'm actually gonna do a takedown to Chad. I'm super excited about this. I've been dreaming about this moment for ages. Payback time. Payback time. So Chad's coming in and Castle stops him by coming in closer. Observe what happens if I don't come in close. Do it again. I don't come in close and boom, I get struck. One major difference between people that know how to fight and people that don't know how to fight is they understand where is their safe area. So Chad, where would be a safe area for you? Okay, well definitely. Definitely here, right? Here. And the other safe area is, is far away. here, right? So safety is in the extremes. Safety is far away or super close. And we see that in this perfect example here where Castle sees that he's about to get hit and he doesn't want to back away. He presses the fight forward knowing that there's safety in being close. So we're doing this again. Castle sees what's happened. He stops immediately, capturing the arm, doing a headbutt, and coming in, coming around and doing a hip throw. Bam, here. Now, for me, I would probably come down with my knee here, but Castle comes down here, like this, having one knee up and one knee down. I would like to note how nice my throw was to Chad, versus how Chad throws me when he does his breakdown. So now Castle takes the weapon, and this guy's done, he's not moving for some reason. And now Castle is armed with a stick and can now fight his assailants armed with a weapon. Armed, love it. Ooh, Ooh okay, stab him. Yeah, so that's a number five attack. So the number five is the first of three stabs. So you have the number five, the eight, and the nine. Let's go further. We'll break down the five for sure, but let's see what else we have here. Strike to the knee, he took a stab to his forearm yeah, and he got clocked in the face. That is brutal. Man, first stop, baby. Okay, so here, Castle now has a shiv and he, he struck the guy with the number five attack. In this context, it's also called a sewing machine attack. We'll talk about that too. Comes up, he stabbed him in the groin and then the chest. Castle knows someone's behind him, boom, finishes oh. him. Okay, we have our second stab, number eight stab. We're gonna talk about that one too. So here we're gonna talk about the number five attack. We're actually gonna talk about it twice. There's a stick version and a, a knife version. They're very similar, but there's slight differences that we need to talk about. In our system, there are mostly slashes, but there are three stabs, the number five, the number eight, and the number nine. So unlike in fencing, where there's this big lunging attack thrust, we don't have that. It's sort of more of a, of a short stabbing motion. When a proper number five attack happens, it's generally here. And then I can stab this in. Why? Because now I have the force. Now, Chad, when you fight, have you ever thrown a punch like this before? No. Right, so. like, it's a ridiculous looking thing, yeah. right? But we have this. And people are like, well, why, are, why is your arm back? There's a reason. I don't want you to grab my weapon. I need to keep you at bay so I can get into the right position and then shove this up. That is the number five attack. I want to come in, it's almost like a pitchfork. I want to shove this in him, and my goal is to throw it behind me. Of course, that's not going to happen with his weight, so I'm just plunging it in. And plus, it's, it's a bladed weapon. It doesn't need that much force to work anyway, so... Well, the thing is, is that it wasn't a bladed weapon. It was a pointy weapon. He penetrated through the guy. So Frank just shoved it into the person and just went on his merry way. Wow. So that was a great number five stab. It's a great introduction to it. Here, we have a number five again, but we have it in a way that's called the sewing machine attack. It's barbaric, it is not very refined, but it's very effective, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes the best attacks are the simple attacks. Now, in this scene, Castle and the assailant were on the ground. We're gonna do it standing up, just so you can see how dangerous this is. Let's say I have Chad here. He knows I'm gonna do a number five. I'm telling him I'm gonna do number five right now. 
But we'll see what happens. Here we go. You ready, Chad? Yep. Here we go. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, they got me. At some point, it's gonna penetrate. So you just have to get out of there. You need to unlock yourself and not be and I felt, there. I felt it was tough to like catch your wrist. So right. if you were really going super fast there, right. that, the chance of me holding your wrist is very difficult. That was a very realistic thing for Castle to do in that scene. That's a realistic thing to happen in prison, frankly. Mm. You have to be very careful about these type of weapons, these shiv weapons, which are not refined at all, but effective. Just based off the time I had what I would do in this scenario, I would remove this grip ASAP. There's different ways of doing it. I mean, I can quickly maybe use a, a Russian tie-up to slip, but then create distance. I don't think I would ever want to stay even near Logan with that type of weapon and that type of movement. This is where reality hits into theory. I've been doing knife work and weapons work for, you know, 17 years, mm. really long time. And Chad, how long have you been doing Fighting. You've been about 13 years. About 13 years. We've been doing this for a long time. But here's the thing, against someone that is truly dedicated and wants that stab, these very simple motions are lethal. Yeah. And they're dangerous even for trained people. If I had someone that was attacking me with a number five sewing machine, I would take that seriously. That is dangerous. That is very dangerous for anyone. We've touched on two versions of the number five stab, and now we're gonna talk about the number eight stab. Chad, is there, is there, there's no punch like this, right? Not that I know of, no. Yeah, this is, th there's no punch like this, why? Because there's not enough force generated. I'm gonna hit you as hard as I can on this shoulder with this. Okay. Tell me, tell me what it does, right? Huh. Not doing anything. I mean, he's laughing that off. Here's what a number eight is. So Chad, I'm gonna hit you here. Okay. So here we go, going here, all right? So wherever I come in, boom. No. I'm telling you I'm gonna stop you here. So stop me here, stop me here, right? Oh. Number eight stab with a weapon is incredibly hard to see. For someone that's not trained in the number eight, and I am trained in the number eight and I'm scared of it, it's because it's so unorthodox. Chad is used to things like this. He's used to things like this. He's used to things like this. He's not used to a lead hand coming in from the outside left side, his right side. That is something foreign to him. And that is why the number eight stab is so dangerous because it is so unorthodox. It is actually one of my favorite attacks with a tool, with a weapon, because I can shoot it from any angle. I can shoot it from the outside right. I can shoot it from the middle. I can shoot it from here. I can shoot it from any angle in ways that my assailant is unprepared for. In this particular scene, Castle sees that another number one is coming. He stops it. It's kind of hard to see what's happening, but I'm assuming he throws the number eight to the body. And then, staying in the blender, he throws the number eight to the neck, finishing his assailant, and then pushing him into a cell. Great move, very simple, very effective. Well, also very impressive was that was the actual guy's cell. That was actually where he's, that's, that's number. So, Castle, good job. Throws him into the cell. Okay, so we're gonna front headlock, guillotine. Okay, so he uses a, uh, a front headlock Does for that, is that real? cracking the neck. No. Let's let's break that down. Let's go over what you can do with that position. Don't and, break my neck. Uh, well, you know, we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll look at the director and we'll, we'll we'll get a cue on that. Fight's moving on. Castle does what he does best. He's punishing people, and now he gets a front headlock on one of the assailants, and he essentially breaks their neck, which is not real. So, okay, what would you do? Assuming there's not other people here, and I want to proceed to finishing this person, the quickest way I can go about it is a strangle, particularly a guillotine strangle. Now, there are different types of guillotines. The one I'll perform is a high elbow guillotine. So what that means is, as I connect my hands like so, I'm going to move my head over to the far shoulder and lift my elbow and hand up high. Getting the hand as high as I can over the shoulder line. Could I strangle Logan on my feet? Possibly. But with someone truly resisting, even untrained, it's tough. It's gonna to take a while. And tell you the truth, guillotine strangles do take a bit of time to work. The best way to get the quickest results of strangling someone with a guillotine is by taking the fight to the ground and using your legs. I apply the high elbow position. I step towards my training partner, my bottom leg, Pivot and I slide right into this clamp. Pull my partner in, I push into the carotid. <laughs> applying a strangle, while using my legs, and applying this type of motion, 
for the squeeze. However, within this context, Castle is fighting multiple assailants with weapons. Right. Now, I understand why the neck breaking move was applied there. It was a means of getting rid of the guy ASAP to move to the next person. That makes sense. Even though in reality, it's not a real means right. of dealing with that person. Another realistic option is taking a head and smashing it against a jail bar. Sure. Hoping that that knocks the guy out and allows Castle to move on to the next person. I agree. Oh, slow motion punch in the face. Bam. Oh, okay. Looks like another fireman's carry. Okay, so it looks like Castle did modern style of a katakuruma, mm -hmm. uh, which we referenced off our King of Shuda right. episode. Why don't we look at how Castle performed his takedown? Okay. And how it would realistically work compared to, let's say, a modern katakuruma. In the battle, Castle, he drops down and what is believed to be his right arm, he goes over to grab behind the leg. I'm assuming with the momentum that he created, he used this tripping mechanism and his force going forward to knock the guy down. And when it happens, he rolls over the legs and comes to top position like so and proceeds to a punching action. Two issues here. There was no upper body control that created Kazushi, also known as off balance mint to set up a connection like that. He just went in, grabbed the leg and pushed through. I would think even with a untrained person who had some decent balance, it, it wouldn't be that easy. So I don't, I don't think that's valid. Two, if you're gonna punch someone without any protection, it's recommended you don't use a closed fist. You could fracture your hand. So what are ways to replace that? Open palm or elbows. Those are two means of striking the face effectively with reducing the chance of you fracturing anything in your arm. Frank's just going wild on this guy's face. Yeah, picks up his weapon and bam, good night, Man. Gracie. So, if given the option to use a tool versus your bare hand, yeah. use the tool. He's just eating those punches. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Oh, okay. No, no, Ugh. no. So, Castle just did an eye gouge. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, that's really gross. Yeah. Um, but it is also very effective. And here's the thing. You learn a lot of eye pokes when it comes to self-defense. Eye pokes and eye gouges are very different things. And one is very not effective, and one is very effective if you can get yourself to do it. And it's pretty gross. I don't know many people that could do it. But we'll talk about that. This is one of my personal pet peeves as someone that teaches martial arts and has taken martial arts for pretty much his whole life. There are so many self-defense teachers which say, you know, just hit the eye, just hit the eye. If you and I are truly in a life and death fight and I poked you in the eye. I gotta eat that and move forward. There's, there's no pausing. Having said that, an eye gouge will absolutely stop them. Frank Castle basically shoved his thumb into the assailant's eye socket. It is incredibly brutal. In fact, even just doing that, I felt how brutal it was. However, it's very realistic for Castle's character. He's done some brutal things, both in this series and in the comic books. That is, that is Frank Castle. That is yeah. Frank Castle, right there. So is that a valid move? 100%. Could you do it? I do not want to meet you if you could. Okay, but that guy's not stopping. He's not stopping. He's got his oh. weapon, he's going in. Oh, oh. that is brutal. Castle's plunging the knife into the neck. That is devastating enough, but then he tears the knife out. Yeah. Like that would have finished it, but not for Castle. He wants to make sure, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, let's make it as gross as possible. Oh yeah. If Chad's coming towards me, yeah. I'm pushing out this knee as he's coming forward, boom, I catch him and notice that it's a perfect shot here. Gravity itself is gonna help me push that weapon out not only penetrating, but also slicing through. So I have his own body weight helping me slice through, and that is definitely going to be a fight finisher. I've always been a huge fan of the Punisher, and I felt that this character really came out in this scene because you can see he's focused on what he needs to do. He knows he's in trouble. He's just like, screw it, I'm gonna do this thing. Great, really good use of Weapons, we saw the number five attack, the number eight attack, we saw sewing machine attacks. 
it is exactly how I would envision a fight scene to happen in the narrow confines of a prison like that. I thought that was great. With regards to the grappling, they do exist to a certain degree in the realm of reality. Obviously, there are certain points where that I just don't think is real, like breaking someone's neck that easily, and maybe the takedown. But I understand why they chose those actions, so that was cool. That's why, because of all these things, I give it a B plus. It was a very good scene. It wasn't perfect, but it was very good. And I feel that for this universe and Frank Castle, it was very appropriate.